Hello all, Scooby331 here, enjoying this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. It's actually part of the reason I want to hit you guys up. I just want to wish all of you a very, very healthy, happy, and safe Memorial Day. In case you can hear it right now, I have the air show going on above my head because of how close I live in proximity to the New York City uh, air show that they have every Memorial Day weekend. Uh... I believe that was actually a World War II era bomber that just went overhead. I'm sorry, because of the artificial canopy that I've created here using uh, vines and various other flowering plants uh, to hide the scenery in the background, which actually isn't that pleasant because of where I live, um, I'm not able to show it to you. And I don't think, honestly, that the camera on this laptop can catch it, to be frank. But the reason I want to talk to you guys today is... I just hope that you all remember what Memorial Day is about. This is one of the things, those things where you shouldn't really wish people a happy Memorial Day. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, when a relative dies and you say to them, happy remembrance of that person's death. That's why this is a Memorial Day. It's to remember, to memorialize those who have fallen in service to this country. And those who have also served this country were blessed enough to pass of natural causes. It's basically, this is a day for remembering service folks and for what they fought for, which is the freedoms and liberties that you and I are able to enjoy today. I wanted to mention all of this to you guys today because I see a lot of folks are uh, going out there and, uh, well, I haven't seen anything of it this year, thank God. But uh, the past year or so, I've seen a lot of vandalism going on. Um, you know what? No, I, I, I apologize. I do remember um, my good buddy, Veteran Mountain Man, did show me on, on our stream, uh, KS120, last week, that there was vandalism that happened down in Texas. I really hope that this is an isolated incident this uh, holiday weekend. It's, it's cowardice. You're picking on those who cannot defend themselves. That is, those who have already passed on. I was raised Catholic. What you guys are doing, destroying graves, you have no idea what type of a sin that is. That's that's a very, very severe form of cowardice. It's the same as attacking an infant in a crib. You're attacking one who can't defend themselves. It's the same as attacking a, a chained animal. You have all the advantage, and they have all the disadvantage. It's very, very frowned upon. If, if you're a person who believes in higher power, this is the reason I mentioned this to you. Um, doesn't matter what faith you are of. If you believe that you're going to be judged, um, yeah, desecrating graves is a, and memorials is a very big no-no. I'm just saying this, you're putting it out there. If you don't believe in any form of retribution, then this video is pretty much pointless and wasted on you because you don't believe in anything that I'm talking about. And that's actually kind of sad for you to not have anything to believe in. I believe in this country. This is the reason I rock our colors. This flag represents all of us. It doesn't represent a certain color. It doesn't represent a certain creed. It doesn't represent a certain race. It doesn't represent a certain ethnicity. It represents the American people. Each fiber of this flag, each stitch, is, a, is representative of a different family in this country. A different individual, if you even want to take it that far. Every thread and fiber, every stitch that makes up this flag is representative of you and me. So when someone burns this flag, they're burning basically an effigy. You, your mother, your brother, your sister, your child, your grandmother, your neighbor, the guy across the street from you that borrows shit and don't ever return it your house of worship, your supermarket, the manager at that supermarket, the clergy at that house of worship. They're all being affected by this spiritually. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not affecting, it might affect them physically. They might get nauseous or sick like I do when I see someone burn it. But it affects you. It's a demoralization. And I don't think you understand when you burn this flag, 
it's not just that you're demoralizing people's spirit and people's faith. You're demoralizing yourself. You're showing you don't, that you don't belong to something that's good. I don't want to say great. We have to make it great again. What we have right now is something good. We have a place where you can come if you are from another part of the world. You can make application and petition to become a member of this society that we have. You can become a member of this republic and have a voice and have a way to further yourself and to make yourself a better person and to make better for your loved ones and for the ones that care about you. That's what opportunity you have. And burning this flag, to me, you're just setting yourself and everyone that you care about and cares about you back. You're taking away from this. Look, I hear everyone saying about how this thing is white supremacy, white guilt, all of this nonsense I hear from you folks. According to uh, the 1488 stipulations that these uh, white supremacists run around ranting about all day, I'm not white according to what they believe. I'm cool with that. Look, I, I'd be honest with you. It never really mattered to me being white, being black. Uh, it just, it's not anything that I gave a fuck about. Sorry to put it so vulgar, but there's really, that's the best way for me to articulate it. I don't care. I never did. I find that I'm lucky and blessed to be an American, and I'm thankful for that. That should be all that it is. My direct ancestry, my grandparents, English was their second language. You understand? I think actually for my father's father, it might have been like his fifth or sixth language. The man was a polyglot, the same as my father was. I'm an, uh, uh unigot? <laughs> I, I forget what, how you would say singular language. I only speak English. I was raised just to speak English, so I would be an American. That's a concept that some people find abhorrent nowadays. Now, I don't think you should basically raise your children to just speak English to make them better Americans. I mean, that's a bit of a quaint and antiquated idea. You know, you should actually raise your kids to be a, like an omniglot. <laughs> Try to teach them to speak everything. I know that's impossible. It might probably be impossible. It's Christ, hundreds of languages, but you should try to teach your children to have as much knowledge as possible. When I think of this country, I think of liberty, I think of freedom, I think of wisdom and knowledge and philosophy. That's why I identify as a progressive and not a conservative. I'm into exploration. I'm into things of that nature. Part of the reason I voted for Trump was because he was going to reinstate NASA. Obama was supposed to be progressive. Space exploration and oceanograph uh, oceanographic exploration. Yeah, I know, I just butchered that, sorry. Those are the two forms of exploration. But that, to me, that's progress. We're supposed to be leaving the Earth. You know, I grew up as a boy in the 80s. Um, people were supposed to be wearing, you know, white jumpsuits with the silver V on them, you know, by this point, And we would have moving sidewalks and flying cars. I understand that's a little bit uh, fanciful, but I'm just saying, you move, that's what, to me, being progressive was. You're moving towards that sort of society. You're trying to move away from disease and sickness, and you're supposed to be moving away from old social norms and constraints. Now, people want to talk about white supremacy and things of that nature. Um, white supremacy and things of that nature, that's very passe. That shit pretty much was as far as I could see it in most of this country, stomped out by the 90s. Seriously, you had, you know, what, a couple of rednecks and pickup trucks showing up in uh, obscure towns in different parts of the South and the Midwest having their rallies and getting drowned out by pretty much white people outnumbering the black people that showed up to argue with them. So it was pretty much, it was one of those things where our society itself had shifted. You have to remember, this white supremacy thing, it wasn't, as much, it was obviously there was hatred there. It wasn't so much hatred as these people were under the impression of an archaic evolutionary model. Nothing against Charles Darwin. What he did was good for this, you know, for our scientific acume and for what moved us forward. But that was taken and ran with. I, I forget who did this. I'm sure that anyone who sees this who's into this sort of thing could probably verbatim give the guy's name and what he said. 
But it was like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, white people evolved from blacks, and so therefore they are superior. That's not accurate at all. We have more scientific models that, you know, basically shit radiated out. It's, I'm not going to go into it. I don't want to segue. But the thing is this. Our society has itself evolved. We, society moves forward. That's what it means to be progressive. What these new people are doing now, when I say new people, I'm talking about these younger folks, the ones who are like 30 and under, who have come up, you know, the post-Clinton era, where they've had this dog, dogmatic bullshit fed to them, that um, they're running in a clan live, they're living in a clan run world. It's, it's, it's insane, okay? It really is. And it's, I just, it, it, that's the whole thing, you know, you, you, they're going over after this shit that's been debunked years ago, years ago, seriously, I was a little boy, and they were in the process of, like, stamping this shit out, you know, they were basically putting out the rest of the fires from when they had hit the hose on Jim Crow, seriously, the civil rights movement worked. It's the same as these uh, these young ladies who are screaming about, you know, the gender the gender wage equality pay gap. I hope I'm saying that right. It's this crazy nonsense. Just like this trans bathroom shit. This is all talking points these Democrats have unrolled in the past few years. I say the Democrats, and I say this for a reason. The Republicans, as a New Yorker, the Republicans are too busy stealing money. That's my opinion up here. Our Republicans steal. That's all these guys do all day. You can look the guy up. Um, his name's Mangano. He was uh, in charge of Nassau County on Long Island. Mangano just got acquitted. I don't know how this happened. He stole so much shit. I couldn't believe all the stuff he took. So my opinion and view has always been this is the reason the Democrats have been able to get away with all this social engineering nonsense and crazy shit they've been pulling the past few years is because the Demo uh, the Republicans have been too busy stealing. Sorry, that's just the way I look at it. Just letting you all know if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm not right wing, nor am I left wing. I'm a centrist. I'm concerned about this country. Red, blue, no, no, this isn't dodgeball. I love this country. I don't choose sides. I'm a diehard Trump supporter because I'm from this part of the country, and so is he. He grew up about 20 minutes away from where I am right now. I don't have, like, you know, it's my reason for, for voting for Trump was because I know a lot of people who work for him. My neighborhood is made up of the people who've done his plumbing, his carpentry, his... Uh, welding, his masonry work, every, you know, that that's what this neighborhood is known for. It's a laborers and union-based neighborhood. My father was a teamster. He drove a cement mixer. He poured the foundation for Trump Tower because Trump wanted him after my father had poured the foundation for the World Trade Center complex. You know, a lot of people are going to sit there and be like, and all taken aback because I'm saying it. My father was a man that drove a truck. And went and did a job because he was the best at what he did in the union of the Teamsters. That's all. Mr. Trump was a real estate developer. And he wanted the best from the union. So he requested them and they sent my father. There is no mythos to this. Okay? There's no legend. This is not the legend of Scooby. I'm just, I just want to clarify that. This is just fact. This is what happened. There's nothing, it does, this doesn't make me a special person. This doesn't make me the fucking anointed one. Excuse me for cursing. I'm not, I'm not saying shit to impress you guys. I'm just saying this is a point. This is what had happened. Same thing. My sister's husband. By the way, I'm just stating that he was a Jordanian man. Because I want to stress the fact when you guys say that Trump is racist. Because I love this. And how with the, uh, the travel ban, which they stopped talking about. Because I don't think they could get traction with it anymore. Um, Mr. Trump exclusively used my brother-in-law and his brothers also, they were in the business also, for his flooring and uh, carpet and tile and etc. of that, you know, uh, vein. He utilized them for everything he did. My brother-in-law's business is actually very big. Um, 
So the man who hates Arabs is what I've heard. I've heard them say Arabs too. I, I, I'm just saying people are going to turn around and say, "Well, he he said Muslims." No, no. The ban was against people from those countries who are predominantly Muslim. But I've heard people, you know, say he doesn't like Arabs. All of his flooring and tile are done by an Arab. I want you people to un understand that. Okay. And here comes another point. So where this leaves us in this conversation is this. I want you all to have a very happy, healthy, and safe Memorial Day. Stop believing the lies the Democrats are telling you because it makes you look stupid. I'm saying this for your own good, folks. I'm not saying this because I'm a dick. I had a nephew. And they had this drink at Taco Bell. It was by Mountain Dew. It was called Baja Blast. And he kept calling it Baja Blast. And he insisted that because it was spelled that way, he wanted to call it that way. And I said to him, in the most plain way I could, I said, Joey, I love you. You're my nephew. But when you call it Baja Blast, you sound like a fucking moron. And I'm saying to you, my fellow Americans, when you sit here and say Trump is racist, Trump is xenophobic, a misogynist, whatever buzzword you hit him with, you sound moronic. When you sit here and say that America is white supremacist, you sound moronic. And when you sit here and say this is a racist statement, when the numbers back up what the man wrote, ran on and what has happened since he's gotten elected, you sound moronic like morons, all right? I'm telling you this for your own good. If a young lady comes to me and says, does this dress make me look fat? And she looks like a sausage. I am going to say to her, yes, it is very unflattering. It does not show how you really look. Remember how I said that? I got five older sisters, believe me. I learned hard and quick. You got to learn how to say things. And this is what I'm saying to you guys. Learn how to word things. If you have a problem with the president, if you have a problem with the administration, if you have a problem with the country, or you have a problem with people like myself who support all of the above, word things properly, thought out, and intellectually. Because... You sound like idiots when you don't. I'm Scooby331, wishing you all a very happy, healthy, and safe Memorial Day weekend. I will see you tonight on Weibo Stream on Chaos 120. I appreciate you taking the time out to listen to me talk and give you this long-winded message. Felt it was kind of necessary, pertinent, and important to address these things on this very, very solemn weekend. Remember, this is a day of festivities that we're going to be celebrating in honor and remembrance of those who have fallen. You're supposed to have a good time and party out of respect and honor for those who are not able to. You are supposed to live your life and enjoy it this weekend as a tribute to those who cannot. When you go out dancing, think that you're able to go out dancing for somebody who has lost their legs. When you hold a loved one, think that you are able to hold a loved one because somebody else lost their arms. And when you are able to sit at the table with your family, remember you're able to do that because there are many houses right now in this country with empty seats. Please, keep this all in the back of your head this weekend because this is the truth of it and this is what you need to remember. Thank you.